If you've had the chance to read the Bible or possess some knowledge about it, it's likely that you are aware of the existence of Jesus' disciples. These 12 individuals are widely recognized for having placed their faith in Jesus' teachings and for their tireless work in spreading His words and actions. Often, we come across stories that describe their lives and the fundamental roles they played. However, there's an aspect of their stories that isn't always explored with the same depth, the final destiny of each of them. In this narrative, we will focus on unraveling and sharing with you the details about how the lives of Christ's Twelve Apostles concluded. If you are drawn to this type of content, which intertwines history with biblical narrative, we invite you to delve into these fascinating stories and to explore these passages with us. Let's first talk about the Apostle Peter. His original Hebrew name was Simeon, and he was one of the first disciples to be chosen by Jesus. Originating from Bethsaida, a small fishing village near Capernaum on the coastal region of the Sea of Galilee, Peter had deep roots in that community. In addition to being a native of Bethsaida, Peter owned a house in Capernaum and was the brother of Andrew, another one of the apostles. It is believed he was likely the son of a fisherman named Jonah. Peter was married, and his mother-in-law, who was miraculously healed by Jesus, is mentioned in the biblical texts. Despite his limited education, Peter was a man of words. He spoke Aramaic with a distinctive Galilean accent, but he also communicated fluently in Greek, a skill that would undoubtedly serve him well in his future mission of spreading Jesus' teachings. In the biblical accounts, Peter is known by several names. His original Hebrew name was Simeon, but he adopted the Greek name Simon, with a similar pronunciation. Upon meeting Jesus, he was nicknamed Cephas, Kapha in Aramaic, meaning rock, or stone, and in Greek, Petros, which eventually became Peter. This name symbolized the firmness and solidity that Peter would demonstrate in his faith and in his leadership within the Christian community. Peter was a man of simple personality, direct, and at times impulsive. He showed aptitudes for leadership, being a warm, energetic, and communicative figure. However, he also revealed himself to be an emotional man, optimistic, and confident in various situations. A notable example of his character is seen in the episode of Jesus' betrayal in Gethsemane. He was called by Jesus while fishing in the Sea of Galilee, and from that moment became one of the closest and most loyal disciples of the Lord. His name always appears first in the lists of the twelve disciples, underscoring his importance and status within the group. After the year 50 AD, historical information about Peter became more limited. However, through his two epistles, we know that he continued active in preaching the word of God and in shepherding the Christian flock until his death. The Christian tradition, widely accepted, holds that Peter was martyred in Rome around the year 68 AD, in a fate similar to that of the Apostle Paul. Tertullian, in the 3rd century, supported this information, and Origen reported that Peter was crucified upside down, a tradition also present in some apocryphal texts. Andrew, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ, came from Bethsaida, a town in Galilee. His life, before joining Jesus, centered around fishing, an activity he shared in Capernaum with his brother Peter. In the Greek language, his name means brave, an adjective that reflects aspects of his character. Originally, Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. Later, he played a crucial role in introducing his brother Peter to Jesus' close circle. Both Andrew and Peter were called by Jesus to dedicate themselves fully to following him, thus becoming part of the Twelve Apostles. Andrew witnessed countless teachings and miracles performed by Jesus. One of the most notable was the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, a miracle that demonstrated Jesus' ability to provide abundantly from the scant. According to tradition, Andrew continued preaching the gospel after Jesus' ascension, taking his message to various regions. He is said to have been martyred in Achaia, 
Greece, where he had evangelized even the wife of the proconsul. His martyrdom took place on an X-shaped cross, later known as the St. Andrew's Cross, in honor of the way he gave his life. James, our next apostle, was the son of Zebedee, and worked as a fisherman before following Jesus. His younger brother was John, and both came from a family likely well-off and respected. James was part of Jesus' intimate group of disciples, along with Peter and John. He witnessed crucial events like the resurrection of Jairus' daughter, Jesus' transfiguration, and his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus gave him and his brother the nickname Boanerges, which means sons of thunder, possibly due to their passionate and vehement nature. On one occasion, both brothers suggested that God should destroy a Samaritan village, demonstrating their zeal and fervor. James was the first apostle to experience martyrdom, executed by the sword by order of Herod Agrippa I, around the year 44 AD. This fact distinguishes James from the other apostle of the same name, who would later lead the church in Jerusalem. John, the brother of James and also an apostle, was thrown alive into a cauldron of boiling oil, but miraculously did not suffer harm, being saved by God in a manner similar to the young men in the fiery furnace in the Old Testament. Before following Jesus, John was a disciple of John the Baptist. Christian tradition suggests that John may have been a cousin of Jesus, linking him to Jesus' mother, Mary. John stayed in Jerusalem for a while before moving to Asia Minor, likely around the year 69 AD, at the start of the Jewish War. He is believed to have lived in Ephesus during the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian. During his exile on the island of Patmos, John received the visions that would form the Book of Revelation. After the rise to power of Emperor Marcus Nerva, John returned to Ephesus, where he is believed to have written his other literary works, with the exception of Revelation. John died in Ephesus after the year 98 AD, at an advanced age. Despite some academic debates over his authorship of certain New Testament books, most scholars accept John's influence in Ephesus, where he fought against heresy and led churches until the end of his life. As for Philip, the New Testament mentions four individuals with this name. Two of them were related to the house of Herod the Great, while the other two played significant roles in the early church. These latter were Philip the Apostle and Philip the Evangelist. Philip's role in the Bible is highlighted both in his apostolic work and in his contribution to the growth of the early church. Philip, known as one of Jesus' twelve disciples, stands out in the biblical accounts, particularly in the Gospel of John, where he is mentioned as the fifth in the list of apostles. Originating from Bethsaida in Galilee, the same town as Andrew and Simon, Peter, Philip is a figure, who although not as prominent in the New Testament, has key moments that highlight his character and his practical approach. In the Gospel of John, Philip is presented as a pragmatic and realistic disciple. A clear example of his pragmatism is found in John 6 5, where, when Jesus asks where to buy bread to feed a crowd, Philip responds directly, showing his practical and logical approach. Furthermore, in John 14 8, Philip asks Jesus to show them the Father, demonstrating his desire for understanding and clarity in his faith. This request reveals his longing for a more tangible connection to the divine. Despite the few direct references to Philip in the New Testament, some Christian traditions suggest that he carried out evangelistic work in Palestine, Greece, and Asia Minor. He is believed to have suffered a terrible martyrdom in Hierapolis and was buried there. However, there is some uncertainty and debate over the details of his story including the possibility that he had daughters. Additionally, there are traditions linking him to evangelization in Gaul, today France, although this is a topic of discussion among scholars. According to some genealogies of the apostles, it is said that Philip died a natural death. Bartholomew, also one of Jesus' twelve disciples, is mentioned primarily in the lists of apostles in the Gospels of Matthew, 10.3, Mark, 318, 
Luke 6.14, and in the Acts of the Apostles 1.13. His position in these lists is consistently after that of Philip. There is a theory that Bartholomew and Nathaniel, mentioned in the Gospel of John, might be the same person. This hypothesis is based on the fact that while the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, mention Bartholomew alongside Philip, the Gospel of John mentions Philip and Nathaniel, but never Bartholomew. If this identification is correct, Nathaniel, meaning God is given, or gift of God, would be his principal name, and Bartholomew would indicate his filiation that is, son of Ptolemy. In the Gospel of John, Nathaniel is presented as someone initially skeptical about Jesus, wondering if anything good can come from Nazareth. However, after a personal encounter with Jesus, in which Jesus reveals knowledge about Nathaniel's thoughts and personal experiences, the latter recognizes Jesus as the Son of God and the King of Israel. Apart from these references, there is little additional information about the life of Bartholomew, Nathaniel, in the Bible. After the resurrection of Jesus, his presence is mentioned in meetings with the apostles, and in the early days of the early church, Acts 1.13. Historical traditions about his life and martyrdom are diverse, and in some cases contradictory, with accounts placing him preaching in Asia Minor and suffering extreme martyrdom, either being flayed alive, whipped to death, or even thrown into the sea inside a sack. Thomas, also known as Didymus, which means twin in Greek, is another of Jesus' twelve apostles. His name in Aramaic, Thomas, has the same meaning as Didymus in Greek. The Bible offers a limited view of his personal life, including his origins and his family. It is suggested that he had a twin brother, but no further details are given. Thomas is known for his personality that shows extremes, such as his pessimism and at the same time a deep devotion to Jesus. These aspects of his character are reflected in different passages of the New Testament. For example, in John 11:16, 16, 20, 24, and 21, 2, he is mentioned as Didymus. His role in the New Testament narratives is significant, especially in his expression of doubt and then faith after Jesus' resurrection. Thomas is widely recognized for his famous doubt regarding Jesus' resurrection. When the other apostles informed him that they had seen the risen Jesus, Thomas demanded tangible proof. He insisted on seeing and touching the nail marks in Jesus' hands and the side pierced by a spear, as related in the Gospel of John, 20:24 20, and 25. However, this episode also reveals Thomas's willingness to seek concrete evidence before accepting something as extraordinary as the resurrection. Eight days later, Jesus appeared again in Thomas's presence. On this occasion, Jesus invited Thomas to touch his wounds and encouraged him to stop doubting and believe, John 20, 27. The encounter left a profound impression on Thomas, who responded with astonishing faith, calling Jesus my Lord and my God, John 20, 28. This statement reflects the transformation from doubt to a deep conviction of Jesus' divinity. In addition to this iconic episode, Thomas was present at other encounters with Jesus after his resurrection, including a miraculous fishing scene on the Sea of Galilee, as narrated in the Gospel of John. However, after the events recorded in the New Testament, information about Thomas's life becomes limited. There are traditions and legends suggesting that he preached the Gospel in India and Syria, and some even claim that he was martyred and killed in those places. However, it is important to note that these stories are not supported by the Bible and should be considered as later traditions without solid historical evidence. Additionally, some traditions also attribute the authorship of an apocryphal gospel to Thomas, but this book generally does not form part of the traditional Christian canon. The Apostle Matthew, also known as Levi, is another of Jesus' twelve apostles and is especially known for writing the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament. Matthew's story begins when Jesus found him working as a tax collector, a profession poorly regarded at that time. 
despite this social disapproval, Jesus invited him to be his disciple, and Matthew accepted this call, Matthew 9 9. Before following Jesus, Matthew was a tax collector, demonstrating how encountering Jesus can completely transform a person's life. Christian tradition attributes to this apostle the authorship of the Gospel of Matthew, although some scholars have questioned this authorship. However, the church traditionally believes that Matthew is the author of this important book of the New Testament. In the Gospel of Matthew, the story of Jesus' life and teachings is recounted, making it the first book of the New Testament. It is interesting to note that Matthew is also called Levi in some accounts, suggesting that after becoming an apostle, he may have preferred to be called Matthew. The Bible offers limited information about Matthew's life, apart from the records of his call to follow Jesus. His story centers on his encounter with Jesus and his transformation into a follower of Christ. After Pentecost, described in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, the Bible no longer provides additional information about the Apostle Matthew. Some traditions, although without solid historical evidence, suggest that Matthew undertook journeys to places like Ethiopia, Macedonia, and Syria. However, the circumstances of his death and his later life are largely unknown from the biblical perspective. Regarding the Apostle James, it is known for certain that his father was named Alphaeus, as mentioned in the Gospels and in the Acts of the Apostles. He is sometimes associated with the name James the Less, to distinguish him from James, son of Zebedee, another of the Apostles. The expression the Less, translates from the Greek homikros, meaning, the small. This description could refer to his stature, or indicate that he was younger than the other apostle named James. In the Bible, James the Less is mentioned in relation to his mother, but no significant details are provided about his personal life or his apostolic ministry. His story is primarily focused on his call to be one of Jesus' apostles. The Bible, after these initial records, does not offer more information about the life of James the Less. However, there are later historical traditions that provide details about his apostolic work and his martyrdom. These traditions suggest that he preached the gospel in places like Persia and Armenia, and that he was martyred and killed in those places. It is important to note that these traditions are not supported by the Bible and should be considered as later accounts without solid historical evidence. In summary, although the Apostles Thomas, Matthew, and James the Less played important roles in the history of Christianity, information about their lives and activities after the events recorded in the New Testament becomes limited, and often relies on later traditions and legends. Mary, the mother of James the Less and of Joseph, is mentioned in Mark chapter 15 verse 40, while in Matthew chapter 27 verse 56, Mary is referred to as the mother of James. This difference in the way Mary is mentioned is due to the existence of another apostle named James, who was more prominent, James, son of Zebedee, one of the twelve main apostles. To avoid confusion between the two apostles named James, it was necessary to clearly identify Cleopa as the husband of Mary, and therefore, the father of the apostle James. This identification was widely accepted by the leaders of the early church. As a result, he is traditionally known as James the Less, or James the Just. James, son of Alphaeus, was at some point associated with James the Just, and this connection is supported by figures such as Jerome of Stryden. Therefore, in the Catholic Church, it tends to be considered that both are the same person. However, it is important to highlight that in some branches of Christianity, such as the Orthodox and Protestant, there is a tendency to distinguish between them. Regarding the death of James the Less, according to the tradition of the Greek Church, he initially preached in the southwest of Palestine and then in Egypt, where he was eventually crucified in Ostracina, in Lower Egypt. Another tradition holds that he was stoned by the Jews in Jerusalem for preaching about Christ. It is important to keep in mind that these traditions are part of Christian history, 
but are not supported by solid biblical evidence. Judas Thaddeus, also known as Judas Labias, was another of Jesus Christ's apostles, and according to tradition, a cousin of Jesus. His mother, Mary, was a cousin of Mary Most Holy, the mother of Jesus, and his father, Alphaeus, was the brother of Joseph, Jesus' stepfather. Judas Thaddeus stood out for his preaching and his testimony, which attracted many pagans to convert to Christianity. It is important not to confuse him with Judas Iscariot, the apostle who betrayed Jesus. According to tradition, Judas Thaddeus was martyred in Persia along with another apostle, Simon the Zealot. They were killed with an axe by pagan priests due to their refusal to worship the goddess Diana. It is said that the relics of Judas Thaddeus are located in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, where they have been venerated to this day. Now let's continue with Simon, also known as Simon the Zealot. He was one of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus Christ. Although mentioned less in the Gospels compared to other apostles, his significance is notable. Born in Cana of Galilee, Simon was chosen by Jesus during a night of prayer on the mountain, along with the other apostles. He received the mission to preach the word of God and perform healings, including the expulsion of evil spirits. In the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, he is known as Simon the Canaanite, possibly to distinguish him from Peter, another apostle with the name Simon. The term Canaanite could be related to the land of Canaan, Palestine, while Zealot could indicate his possible association with the ultranationalist sect called the Zealots, who sought the liberation of Israel from Roman domination. As part of the Apostles' missions, Simon undertook missionary journeys that took him to places like Egypt, Great Britain, Spain, Asia Minor, Mesopotamia, and Syria, where he joined other apostles in their evangelistic work. The martyrdom of Simon is shrouded in some controversy, as there are different versions. Some reports mention that he was crucified, others speak of him being burned at the stake in Armenia, and some even mention that he was sawn alive. In Catholic iconography, Simon is often depicted holding an open book in one hand, and a long saw in the other, symbolizing the instrument of his martyrdom. Judas Iscariot, on the other hand, was part of the select group of Jesus Christ's twelve apostles, but became known as the traitor due to his betrayal of Jesus. Judas Iscariot handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers in exchange for thirty pieces of silver, identifying him with a kiss on the Mount of Olives. This act of betrayal deeply marked his name, turning it into a synonym for betrayal. Judas Iscariot was born in Kerioth in Judea, and was the only apostle who was not a native of Galilee. He stood out as the treasurer of the apostolic group, being in charge of the finances. His role in Jesus' betrayal is widely known, and his final fate was a tragic act of remorse. Judas hanged himself on a fig tree, ending his life after the betrayal. The surname Iscariot has an interesting history behind its origin. This term likely derives from the Latin word Sicarius, meaning assassin. This connection possibly indicates Judas Iscariot's association with a radical Jewish group known as the Sicarii, some of whom were considered terrorists at their time. Another theory about the surname Iscariot suggests it could be a reference to his original surname. Besides the canonical accounts, in the 3rd or 4th century, a manuscript known as the Gospel of Judas emerged, offering an alternative view of Jesus' story and Judas' action. In this text, Judas is presented as Jesus' closest disciple and the one who deeply understood his message. It suggests that his betrayal was carried out at Jesus' request to fulfill a prophecy. However, it is important to highlight that this gospel is considered a non-canonical document and does not form part of the traditional New Testament. Judas Iscariot's death is mentioned only in two passages of the Bible. In Matthew 27, verses 3 to 5, it is recounted that before dying, Judas experienced pathetic remorse. He sought out the chief priests and elders to return the thirty pieces of silver he had received as payment for betraying Jesus. 
faced with the priest's refusal to accept the money tainted by the price of betrayal, Judas threw the coins in the temple before going out to hang himself. In Acts 1 verse 18, the evangelist Luke provides more details about Judas' death, based on the account of the apostle Peter. According to Luke, Judas Iscariot fell headlong and burst open, spilling all his insights. This is a grim portrayal of his tragic fate. It is important to mention that in addition to the twelve apostles, like Judas Iscariot, Paul is considered an important apostle in the history of Christianity. Although he was not among the twelve, he was personally called by Jesus on the road to Damascus. Much of the book of Acts of the Apostles focuses on Paul's missions, who took Christ's message beyond the Jewish world, earning the title of Apostle to the Gentiles. However, his life of faith was marked by suffering, facing persecution, mistreatment, torture, and imprisonment on several occasions. The Book of Acts of the Apostles records some of these arrests, including his imprisonment in Rome for two years while awaiting to appear before the Emperor. Many scholars believe that this was not Paul's last imprisonment, and that after being released, he continued his ministry in different places, such as Greece, Nicopolis, Thessalonica, Crete, and several cities in Asia Minor. Finally, in the year 64 AD, a great fire devastated Rome, and Emperor Nero was accused of starting it. To divert the accusations, Nero blamed the Christians, triggering a brutal persecution in which many Christians were arrested, tortured, and martyred in various ways, including crucifixions, being thrown to the beasts, burnings, and beheadings. In the year 67 AD, Paul was arrested again and wrote his last letter to Timothy, aware of his imminent execution. Christian tradition holds that Nero condemned him to beheading on the road from Rome to a less cruel fate due to his Roman citizenship. In summary, these apostles played significant roles in Christian history, and their lives and actions have been the subject of study and veneration over the centuries. Each of them left their mark on the history of Christianity, whether through their faith, their preaching, or their actions, both positive and negative. And so we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you for being part of our channel, a space where we seek to share wisdom and reflections on faith. I send you a warm greeting and a strong hug. Until next time, and may God bless you.